Oh, hold on a second. What? No, I can't zoom. I'm in person. I'm alive. Guys, you're real people. Like, look at your neighbors. Like, pat yourself down. You're really here. It's really cool. Welcome to the Frank Sinatra School for the Arts in Astoria, Queens. Pretty nice space, right? I can't tell you how excited I am for today. I'm as excited as you are. And just, I, I'm a little choked up that you guys were clapping as I was walking in. I was like, oh yeah, it's a great, you know, great Milky White. I love that. <laughs> uh, we have a, just in a great day today. And I want to kind of just set it up for you to note that I always say this, but I really want to emphasize today, play. Okay, your artists who teach, don't be like, oh my God, I can use that. I can, and get out of your head, just play. Okay, when I'm working with our fantastic facilitators, let's give it up for our facilitators who are here today joining you guys. Many of them in their back and around. We talked about what we all need is just a chance to connect, right? To connect to each other, connect to our students, of course, but also just to connect to yourself, right? And so today is a day to really think about just being present, right? And so that's why I'm calling today being in the moment. Um, and that is a nice segue. Can we go next? So the Dalai Lama said there are only two days in the year that nothing can be done. One is called yesterday. The other is tomorrow. So today is the right day to love, believe, do, and mostly live. And I want you guys to really carry that forward. You know, it, it's their platitudes, right? Being the moment, be present. There's a lot of moments that we're going to look at. But I really want you just to, just to just be sponges. And if you see somebody who you're like, I've seen you before, or I don't remember you, or I have no idea who you are, reach out. Make connections, right? That's why we're not virtual. It's about this. It's about being together. It's about touching. It's about feeling. It's about experiencing everything, the room, the air, right? The sounds, the people around you, the, the mess ups, whatever it is. So uh, let's go to the next slide. And I just said there's lots of moments, so I just wanted to share with you, I just kind of took a minute and just started thinking about what, are, what kind of moments do we have? There's something about this word moment, right? That matters. Just think about why. Why, why does a moment matter? Isn't it about the big picture, right? Isn't it about kind of like at the end of the days you look back kind of stuff? But you, nothing to look back to if you didn't stay in the moment all those days that led up to looking back, right? You can't reflect if you have nothing to reflect on. You can't assess something that is literally just curriculum. And by the way, we assess curriculum too, right? but it's not just about technique and skill and vocabulary and theater literacy and the blueprint. It's all of those things, but at the end of the day, it's about moments you have with your students where they and you might have that aha or exhale, right? So just look at a couple of these and think about what resonates with you for a second. And I want to share just one more with you. Can we go to the next slide? Isn't that what we strive for in theater? Or as Stephen Colbert used to say, truthiness, right? It might not be literal truth. It's hard to define literal truth. Some, that could be relative. That's a whole conversation, right? But for the people in the moment, in the exercise, in the space, in the audience, waiting to go into a show, you know, in the wings, doing tech theater, the teachers, the system principals, that when we're having that third space experience of theater, we want it, we desperately need it to feel truth. Does that resonate with you guys? So today, you're gonna be thinking about like, huh, while you're having lunch, what moment or moments of truth resonated for you? And how can we kind of today be a day for rejuvenating for you for the last couple weeks, but even more so propulsing you into next year? so that you feel excited to bring your students back and start fresh and rock it in your elementary schools and your middle schools and your high schools. And whether it's an inclusive setting, right, a gen ed setting, a performing arts setting, all of the above, you guys are doing seriously important work. 
And I talked to the chancellor. He came to my high school theater festival. He was there. I'm going to show a little clip. And the chancellor spoke amazingly. We'll get that footage for you guys to see about the power of theater. But backstage, he and I were talking, and he just said, your theater teachers are so important. And I said, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I didn't say that to him. I was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so let's go to the next slide. So just kind of just, this is in your packet. The packet's virtual. We'll be, if Daryl didn't already email it out to you, you'll have it a virtual, and you can print it on your own. But to save a couple trees and to save you guys leaving stuff around. So just want to share with you just kind of a quick context, very quick. If you remember back in uh, January, February, I talked about going back, we're going back to the future, right? We were going from the virtual space, well, we thought we were going from virtual into real, but you were all doing that in teaching. I thought we were going to be doing it at the PD already by then. But back to the future meaning that you were coming back with your kids, but it wasn't the same kids, it wasn't the same space, you're not the same after what we've been through, right? So we were going back to what we want to do, but we're in the future doing it. But now, we're gathering to our year in a moment to build on centering students' creative expression and voice, making meaning. And today, these are just a couple bullets that I want you guys to hopefully, hopefully you'll, you'll activate, right? To build community and develop connections amongst yourselves. It's not just about your students. You serve your students when, you're, when your mask is on, right? Like an airplane analogy. When you got that oxygen mask on first, then you put it on the people who are dependent on you, okay? Otherwise, it's very short-lived. To support wellness and social, social emotional learning. To foster the curious artists in yourselves. Take an artistic creative risk today. The only way to fail is to fail big, and in our safe space, it doesn't matter, right? Everybody just applauds you for trying. And, and do, have our students do as we do, not as we say, right? So we don't want to have you guys kind of waiting for everybody else to volunteer, but then you get frustrated when your students don't. Right? So just kind of be like, oh, I'm going to walk the talk and talk the walk. And walk the walk and talk the talk. i, I got to get out of this one. Okay. Uh, we want to ground our work, of course, always in being culturally responsive. That's never going to go away. It never should go away. Many of you were doing it before it became a term. And now that we've identified it and we can actually talk about what are characteristics of it, we want to stay there. And then just to rejuvenate and refuel. Great. Let's go to the next slide. This is the agenda for today. We're at the kickoff. In about five, 10 minutes, you're going to go to your first session. It should have been circled on your agenda. People, the facilitators will, will walk you to the spaces. We're going to come back here. I'm sorry, then you have a second session in that same space. So you're not leaving, right? And that's a very exciting one. The first one's on improv and theater games, just to play, to give you stuff to use, just very practical and fun. The second one is about assessment and reflection theatrically, not just having kids do a turn and talk or write about it, but actually get it into their bodies. Uh, after that, we'll come back here, and we have Moises Kaufman and Barbara Pitts McAdams. Hopefully, every one of you got their book, the Tectonic Moment book. Yeah, when you came in. If you didn't get it, we'll get one later. It's an amazing resource. We'll have them do a keynote. We'll do a lunch. Lunch is on the fifth floor. Panera box lunches for everybody, so you don't need to even leave the building. Um, if you want to go away, that's fine. Just come back at like 10 of 1. Then we'll end with two master group sessions. For elementary, I'm so excited you're gonna be working with Broken Box Mime and Becky Baumel, and they're amazing. And then the middle school and high school will be working with Tectonic, okay? Uh, there are, there's one advanced Tectonic session. If you have done Tectonic work before and you wanna join that session, just let somebody know in the front. And then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna do a different kind of reflection and wrap up. I'll just leave that. If you haven't already, who's doing the National Theater homework, NT? Okay, for those of you that do not have your hand up, you can sign up. We've got, we've got some more spots left for teachers. Uh, Jen Katona, our colleague, has been working with me on that. We'll send that out. We're doing a whole nother year that's access to National Theater filmed productions for free for you and your students. And we're gonna be having all kinds of lessons added because we'll be back in person. Uh, so it's, next year's gonna be very exciting. Let's go to the next. Teacher resources, so you're getting a lot of stuff today, folks. Like today is definitely, uh, great fun, but there's also, you're gonna have a lot of things to look at and use over the summer. So let's go to the next slide. I'm just gonna run through what they are. So you're gonna be getting all kinds of texts from, of diverse plays and monologues to be using, uh, and also some teacher texts. Next one. These are just a sample of three. 
So for elementary teachers, you're gonna say I'm elementary and you'll be getting multicultural plays for children, grades pre-K to two, pre-K to three, and grades four to six. For uh, everybody, you're getting the moment workbook and for our high school, middle school teachers, you're getting a uh, fantastic text from our, play our friends at Epic. Melissa Friedman is one of our facilitators. Uh, this is their uh, Citizens Artist Guide to Helping Young People Make Plays That Change the World. And this is an um, amazing collection of work that they've done that you can use and do. Let's go to the next slide. You'll be getting technical theater for non-technical people. Keep going. If you remember Dr. Elias, he was our social emotional learning uh, guy. He's gonna be working with me next year to, to be doing some assessment work on the impact of theater and social emotional learning. This is a great resource that you'll be getting if you haven't already. Next. This is a, uh, a uh, laminate uh, that he did, which we sent out. If, you, if we have extras, we'll give them to you. Uh, but this is a really great cheat sheet on CSRE and theater and the arts. Next one. This is a must have. <laughs> This is a stress ball for you guys. It also functions as a, uh, a smartphone holder. <laughs> Hopefully when you came in, you got your Moleskine Theater Journal, and you can you know, write, take notes today if you want, whatever. Next one. Everybody's getting a very cool I Teach Theater beanie. All right. <laughs> I love what resonates. You're like, theater books, <laughs> beanie. <laughs> Each one of you get a custom backpack which you'll be able to put the resources into. It's not custom, it's just a backpack, but it, it's, it says I teach theater. And so, if you, so when you're walking around, you can be like, you know, I'm one of the theater geeks, I'm really cool. <laughs> this is super, super helpful. External hard drive with crazy memory. Next one. Next. You're gonna get two flood lamps. <laughs> Read that too. One would be cool. Two is ridiculous. You're gonna be getting tape, there you go. Somewhere in this room, Daryl Embry just went, yes. <laughs> Next. Uh, you're getting nothing after that. So I'm gonna tell you what this is and we'll see it. That's little Amal. For those of you that were with us in November, I showed a quick thing about her. Little Amal is a 14-foot puppet by handspring puppets that walked 5,000 miles from Aleppo, Syria to the UK in the summer of 21 to November. And the idea is she's a representative of all refugees. She's a Syrian refugee is where she started, but she's representing all refugees, all children especially, right? And the journey was how do we welcome immigrants and refugees? And so in every town they went to, there was welcoming activities and dances and parties and things. I saw this and was extremely moved, and I think I shared it with some of you guys in November, just to be like, you know, let's keep in perspective, right? The world is a little crazy at times, we got our own stuff going on, but our goal, you, you all signed up for this, right, is to help our children, and my children of all ages, right, to help our, our youth through to cradle to the grave. Are we able to get this going? I'm, I'm stalling. So, so the idea is, uh, go back. Sorry, that's too soon. So I loved it, and I was like, okay, great. And I shared it with you. Well, guess who contacted me? The producers of Little Mall. She's coming to New York. She's gonna, I don't wanna get emotional. She's coming to land in JFK, and she's gonna do a circuitous route trying to get to Ellis Island, right, for the huddle masses to be received in this country that has such amazing ideals that we don't always live up to, but we strive for. Hello, everyone. My name is Amir Nizar Zardeh, and I would like to introduce you to a very special 10-year-old. Little Amal is a three and a half meter puppet of a refugee child who last year walked across 8,000 kilometers across Europe from the Syrian-Turkish border all the way to Manchester. She did that walk in support of refugee children everywhere. Her story isn't very different. Uh, many children who come to New York as asylum seekers, refugees, and immigrants. They're all searching for a better life. Youth, you teach every day and whose voices need to be heard. I'm excited to tell you that for three weeks in September, Amal will be walking through all the five boroughs of New York 
and we are very thrilled to be working with Peter Avery and his theater program, and hopefully through that with many of you. We recognize how crucial his theater education work is in supporting New York City youth as they navigate their journeys through life. We've prepared a short film to introduce you to Little Amal's story so far, and we are very excited to meet you all in September. Thank you very much. So what will happen is I'll be reaching out, and if you think it, she's coming early, she's coming September 14th to like October 1st. So if you think that you've got students who want to greet her and meet her in your boroughs, she's going to go to all five boroughs. She's going to get lost on the way to Ellis Island and go through Jamaica, Queens, and the Bronx, and Staten Island, and everywhere in between. Right? And we want to have students there to do drum circles, and to dance, and marching bands, and you know, performative spaces that can be done like in three minute clips and repeated kind of stuff. So if you think really you can do it and have them there, or even just have your kids walk along and dance with her, whether they're K to high school, you know, you, you respond to that email. I'm gonna say don't respond if you're not sure you can do it. It's totally cool, but I, but I can't like have people bail on this project. Does that make sense? Great. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna just talk about the rooms you're gonna go to. We're gonna show the theater festival clip and, and I think then we're going to call it a day. Welcome to the 8th Annual Schubert High School Theater Festival here at the Winter Garden Theater. The Schubert High School Theater Festival is a celebration of student artistry in our New York City schools and really showcases the impact that theater can have when schools have a dedicated theater program. The bottom line is to really have fun. That's it. You learn early and it stays with you the rest of the, your career. So, for both of us, break a leg! So we have productions from across the city, all five boroughs applying and we select those schools to perform on a Broadway stage. Theater taught me that I had a right to love myself. I had a right to be in a crew with the outcasts and still be in the center of the stage. And I have carried that kind of light and power with me to this day. Once upon a time, 
Oh, I'm sorry, is there a narrator in this part? I, I, I just did the show, I got confused. <laughs> I'll let you take it from here. Careful the spell you cast, not just on children. We're on Broadway, it's so exciting. Getting to see something I did put on a Broadway stage, like, some of that's my blocking. I helped with making some of the cuts for the performance. I'm beyond excited. But it, feel, it really does feel good to be here and to perform with people that I love performing with. But to be on a Broadway stage, yet alone the Winter Garden, that's, that's crazy. The goal of launching the festival was to show the world what our students are capable of doing when we treat them like professionals. But the life skills and the work that, that we put in from the first audition all the way to tonight will give them serious skills and confidence no matter what paths they take. It's made me a little more confident because when I first started I was very nervous every time I was about to perform in front of people but now it's not so nerve-wracking because I'm very used to it. Yeah, it just it feels like a dream come true. <laughs> I'm just so ready to get out there and just kill it. I'm so excited. <laughs> Party, bring the party. Because it really does feel like a breath of fresh air that we, you know, can come together and make theater and see theater. I think it's been great for the kids to see their peers from across the city uh, doing what they love as well and excelling at it and cheering and making those bonds. I think it's been pretty special today to see that happen. This is our first time back in person after several years, and the kids are electric. They're doing workshops at Ripley Greer, working on their craft and working on professionalism. For the workshops today, we mixed the kids up from different schools. We wanted them to say, you're all theater artists. This is not a competition, it's a celebration. Being with the other schools feels really special because we get to see everybody who's worked so hard to be here. Into the woods, it's time to go. It may be all in vain, I know. Into the woods, but even so, I have to take the journey. Into the woods, the path is straight, I know it well, but who can tell? Into the woods to lift the spell. Into the woods to visit mother. Into the woods to fetch the things. To make the potion. To go to the festival. I really, like, I have no idea what is happening to me right now. Like, I'm so, like, still in shock of, like, being in this space. I got to go backstage. As everyone in this room knows, theatre education is vital. We commend Chancellor Banks, who in his brief tenure has already shown a commitment to the education of the entire child. Arts education, and specifically theatre, is a priority for my vision for how our students are best served, both academically and social-emotionally. The spirit of creativity is the path forward for all of our children. These productions are simply magnificent. I don't know about you, but this certainly makes me want to see the full production at their schools. Wouldn't you agree? Being able to educate my students in theater is so important. I tell the students all the time, you might not be the next Broadway star, but the skills and the life lessons that you are learning are going to stead you well for the rest of your life. And as I was watching this performance, this beautiful performance of yours, I just felt that you've had such a, such a terrifically difficult two, three years behind you, and your resilience as a community of high school students studying theater is so magnificent. And they've been taking on stage all afternoon so that they can share their artistry with a house filled with family members, many in a Broadway house for the first time.
I went to Foreign Arts High School. It's great to see strong arts programs thriving so much now that we have a festival. Many people just think of it as like song and dance. There are actually very important messages that can be spread through theater that get people to start thinking about things. I've had this dream, and I've had this thought. What kind of dream? A powerful dream. Okay. About a slave ship. years old um, and I'm a senior in high school um, so I have a very recent perspective on how high school theater impacts high schoolers. Theater is a content area it's not extracurricular it's a subject that students should learn and work on the craft and whether they become professional theater artists or in any field these skills of being present of collaboration a focus of knowing your role will transcend the stage and help them in life. My quick story is that I was in the audience watching Rent and I wanted to do what I saw on that stage, which was tell the truth. Thank God I had a teacher that believed in me. I want to stand next to you like I'm standing next to Mateo on a Broadway stage. Partner in crime, Daryl Emery, who, who produces the festival with me. And also today, shout out to Callie McLone. Many of you know Callie is uh, moved on. Uh, she's doing amazingly. Uh, she is really needed to focus also on raising her family. So she's close to her family in, in, uh, in the southern Jersey area, or sorry, Cherry Hill, Philadelphia area. Uh, and so Daryl and Catherine Strobel and a couple of other people really stepped in and helped out from April. So thank you, Daryl, again. Um, we're good. Um, oh, also, you see Kyle and Sandy. They are the ones on the camera crew, amazing filmmakers. They're going to be going in and out today. They may pull a couple of you aside. If they say, can, can I take you for a minute, please go with them, because we're making a, a kind of a quasi-documentary about this work, so we can show the chancellor and all the funders and keep saying, this is why we need theater education in our schools, and not just in these schools, but in every school. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you later today.